Welcome back. We are staying on top of the weather conditions and the threat of severe weather across the state tonight. Here are some of the pictures sent in by our viewers today. If you snap a picture of the conditions in your area, send it to us. This one, yeah, you can see that uh, wall cloud that we talked about earlier containing some rain. Again, Ian's been very specific. Not everybody's going to see this stuff. There are two very distinct tracks of storms. One far north of the metro, Hibbing area. I'm going to sort of yeah. located there and then this other one. And this is Katie from Evansville sending the shot. You can see the rain off in the distance there, Ian, and uh, just these intimidating, ominous looking clouds. If you do have some pictures that you can share, go to foxnine.com slash photos, upload them there, and we may use them in a later broadcast. Uh, Ian, you've been tracking what's been happening earlier today into the afternoon and then what is yet to come. Yeah, and that's the important thing. What is happening right now and where is it going? what is moving in what direction. Here is the last six hours. Now, think about it. This morning in the metro, the rumbling thunderstorms, the brief periods of heavy rain, and then plenty of muddy, murky, milky cloud cover that kept temperatures down. We made it to 80 degrees in the last hour, but here off to the northwest, high temperatures were upper 80s and low 90s. Important though, dew points made it into the mid, some areas just into the upper 60s. That's very hot, and that is very humid. That set the stage for the large yellow box, a severe thunderstorm watch in place until 10 a.m. Now, all of the little yellow boxes, the smaller yellow boxes, those are severe thunderstorm warnings that are current. So let's give you a current shot of radar and start moving around the map here. Look, there's Fergus Falls, and you can follow I-94 down. Highway 10 just off to the north between Fergus Falls and Brainerd. Severe thunderstorm warning here for uh, Aiken, Carlton, Itasca, St. Louis counties, Cass and Crow Wing County. I'll take you down so we can talk about one and then a latest uh, severe thunderstorm warning just added here for Douglas and Pope County until 6.30 p.m. Now, uh, there's 94, and I mentioned this earlier. This storm is starting to creep into par, uh, portions of northwestern Stearns County. That is exactly what we're seeing right now. And I'll tell you, Alexandria, that is a big, booming, loud, vivid thunderstorm with lightning tracker and hail at one to two inches. Now, off to the north. Mentioned this earlier, the th uh, the fact that this could be a blowdown. Notice this is a line of storms in advance of that line of storms, possibly winds at 60 to 70 miles per hour before the storms arrive. So from Hibbing through Meadowlands down toward Shamrock and back off toward Emily, very strong storm and a lot of rotation. That's where these uh, boxes show up. The gold boxes are mesocyclone. In other words, there is a degree of rotation in the storm. See just to the north here of Shamrock, those little turns and it says early Early, that is what we call an early TVS, an early tornado vortex signature. Now, I want to set your mind at ease. We're not talking about tornadoes. That is verified rotation at more than one level of the storm. It is an early indication of more and more rotation into the body of that storm. Between Hill Lake and Shamrock, stretching here toward Highway 2, if you're in the midst of this storm, Put your personal storm plan into effect. Now slide here along the North Shore. A new tornado warning. We already had one for Lake County. This is for portions of Lake and Cook County until 645. So Crystal Bay, Tofty, just off to the north and northeast of Silver Bay. You are all uh, due to put your personal storm plan into effect. Stay skyware if you're here along this portion of the North Shore. Now back to the big picture. Where does it all go? This line of storm the portion here that's heading into St. Louis County will continue east-northeast. The portion here just north of Brainerd is going to start to dive off to the southeast. That puts it just north of Mille Lacs toward I-35. And this cluster of storms along I-94, I think you can almost think of this like a car. These will track here along and parallel to I-94 over the next couple of hours. So watch what we do here with storm vision. Put it all into motion and the storm's linear effect here could bring some very strong winds and that big threat of large hail. That is all part and parcel of this forecast moving forward. When I talked about high temperatures, look at that. 90 in Detroit Lakes, 86 in Brainerd, 80 today in the metro. Pretty much where we sit right now, but behind these storms will turn the winds out of the northwest. We drop the humidity and we drop the temperatures. Now you're sitting in the metro and you're like, 
looking out the window going, I think that guy with the sleeves rolled up has lost it. We don't have any storms right now, but we do have some growing instability that could support the storms metro based here and even greater metro as we work through 8, 9 and 10 p.m. tonight. Strong storms taper into a windy and warm day tomorrow and then showers and storms dominate the forecast from Saturday afternoon through the weekend and all the way into early next week. On the other side of the storms, we're sunny and we're nice. We're very quiet here Thursday and Friday, but again, unless, oh, well, uh, there's something new for us here. There's a new tornado warning. So for folks in the booth, we're going to go a little longer in the weather segment tonight. I want to take you around and talk about um, the tornado warning. Give me 30 seconds to go to the, uh, to the weather center here. This is one of those nights, Randy and Kelsey, where things are going to get very, very active. So follow me as we get down and look at this uh, latest tornado warning. And this is for uh, Brainerd Lakes region stretching down toward areas like, uh, hang on through, just off to the north of Mille Lacs. Oh. Yeah, and this is what, yeah. Moving towards Crosby. That's what we've been talking about here, moving toward Crosby. To the north of Nisswa. To the north of Nisswa. You can hear Jennifer McDermott in the uh, in the weather center with me here. Let me get this thing squared up for you here. So there you see Cross Lake, Nisswa, Brainerd, uh, Aiken, Hazleton, all to the north, northwest of uh, Mille Lacs. And a really good king point for anybody who knows what's going on here. There's 169 as it bends around Mille Lacs. Come back and you think about the quaint town of Nisswa, then up toward Cross Lake. Lightning tracker pinging away. A Doppler indicated tornado warning for uh, Aiken, Aiken, Cass, and Crow Wing counties until 645. So we've got uh, fully 25 more minutes left. Want to set your mind at ease. We've been talking about a blowdown. The winds are very real. The lightning, very real, and the large hail. This is Doppler indicated. In other words, there is enough rotation in this storm that the warning is issued. We do not have any confirmation of any tornadoes on the storms. And, I, and I'm lucky enough to have Jennifer McDermott in the Weather Center. Jennifer, if you know something happens, you're just going to yell it out at me, right? Okay, so right over top of Cross Lake, and I know you can't hear her, she's not mic'd up, but she's talking about north of Nisswa, uh, just barely onto Jenkins, but right over top of Cross Lake. And the direction of this storm here is tracking off to the east southeast, 10, 20, 30 minutes from now. What do you got, Jennifer? Just Okay, so fast storm, right? 55 mile per hour, not wind speed, forward storm speed. So I want you to think about this storm as it's moving forward. There's the hail courts identified. See that beam right there? That's 10, 20, and 30 minutes from now. So right over top of Cross Lake with these storms continuing to move forward in time. I'm going to move really quickly off to the Weather Center. Um, Doppler indicated tornado warning. Randy's coming over to help with the mic in the Weather Center. This is what we do uh, to make sure that we can take care of business and keep you up to date on the storm. Watch, I'm just going to go back here and I want to give you a, a, a better look at the overall picture because we've been talking about this storm developing and moving in different directions. One direction, this core of storms here is moving east with the Doppler indicated tornado warning here for parts of Lake County. Now we end up with this second little cluster of storms that's breaking from what we call the mean flow. This is beginning to track here off to the southeast and this little cluster of storms is working right along and just to the north of I-9 Last night, if you watched, I talked about the line of storms developing and shooting off to the south. That's where we find ourselves in a very storm rich, lucrative storm environment. So once you come here, Grant, Stevens, Pope, Douglas counties, I call that the four brothers and sisters, we're starting to move away. There is the Doppler indicated tornado warning. And I say there, it is here, the flashing black and white from Crossway Lake down toward Nisswa, but notice where the storm has locked on here on Doppler. Here's the storm fan. Now I talk about this moving out, there's 10 minutes, there's 20 minutes, there's 
30 minutes. The proposed location, if you will, from the algorithms that come into Doppler about where we're moving here. So all along 169 downward Hazleton, uh, Aiken, this is one of those events that when you think about fully leaved trees, when you think about some inordinate amounts of rain, hard for the roots to hang on, those trees are like big uh, sailboats, if you will. When we talk about a Doppler indicated tornado, you can imagine the storm's moving forward speed of 55 miles per hour. You can also imagine the outflow boundary. So as this storm is coming, the winds will be shooting out here. Winds in excess of 60 and 70 miles per hour, fully leaf trees. It's cabin country. Most people, unless you're on a lake and you're on the right point of the lake and you can see this storm coming, you're not going to, in fact, see this storm coming. Blinding rain here, the thunder and lightning. This is a very powerful storm. I don't want to forget what's happening in parts of southern St. Louis County, stretching into uh, areas like Duluth. It is a raucous, severe weather night here off to the north. Um, I do want to take a minute and make sure that we uh, are. You're OK, Kelsey and Randy. Everyone's good. OK. Oh, yeah. Um, Mitchell, I want to check in with the booth, make sure everyone is good there. If we have some extra information, I know we have a reporter stretching up toward Hinkley. Really important, and I'll say it here to everyone on the air, I don't want people venturing out to find storms and pictures. It's not what you do. We have professional storm chasers on the job tonight. They're not going to come into the storm. They're going to come from behind or from the south of this storm. So don't think, wow, there's a storm near me. I'm going to get in a car and drive around and see it. We don't need you to do that. We've got people to do that, and we'll get you those pictures from the pros as soon as we can. Doppler indicated tornado warning here for Cook and Lake County stretching into Tofty, Crystal Bay, and right across that portion of the North Shore, just off to the north and east of Silver Bay. Where is it all headed? This is a great question. There's the Doppler indicated tornado warning. The orientation of this warning, just follow the lines to give you an idea of this storm's direction. So Malax, you are in the weather, uh, um, uh, under the weather gun here. So uh, the actual town or city of Malax over toward Hinkley, absolutely stretching down here into Malax County, then into Sherburne County and stretching all the way over to Ramsey and Washington counties, all here in the next 60 to 120 minutes. Randy, you got something? Jennifer's got something? Um, yeah, just real quick, that southern edge storm for Stearns and Todd, right now I'm looking at the velocity, That's right there. and it's looking like this thunderstorm is capable of producing around 60 to 70 mile an hour wind gust, and that is leaving Osakis, moving towards West Union, moving towards Sox Center, moving towards Gray Eagle. So thunderstorm, yeah, just down towards the south, that's where those winds are radar indicated 60 to 70 miles an hour. Yeah, so very good. strong winds. Thanks, Jennifer. Um, an interesting note, that's the same supercell structure, if you will, as the northern storm in Brainerd. I talked about the winds in advance of the storm and the danger last night, and I've been talking about it this evening of straight line winds. It's not just about the supercell structure of this storm. Vivid thunder and lightning, blinding rain, large hail, but as the this storm right here is moving forward. That's the storm that Jennifer was just keying on with the possibility of outflow in straight line winds in advance. So uh, let me give you an idea here. This isn't about while the storm is here, when do the winds arrive? This is the storm is five miles in that direction. The winds are coming at me pre storm pre blinding rain pre thunder and lightning this is a storm in the distance and the winds come rolling through that is indicative of straight line wind so uh, that was great information from Jennifer stretching right here into northwestern portions of Stearns County there's the Doppler indicated tornado warning just north of Brainerd Nisswa stretching down toward 169 and northern portions of Lake Mille Lacs and now we're starting to pick up these uh, early Doppler indicated tornado vortex signatures that's the little spin you see right here and everywhere we find a gold box again indicative of what we call a mesocyclone signature um, a degree of rotation in a storm and you say to yourself what are you talking about how does that work well Doppler radar works on a slice and it slices five 
times with each successive slice getting higher in the atmosphere and then resetting. Once it's gone through all of the slices, we end up with a radar picture, a radar shot that we can show you. What it's saying is somewhere in one of those radar slices, there's a degree of rotation. Sometimes it's elevated nowhere near the ground and won't get near the ground. But nonetheless, we know that there is rotation embedded in the heart of these storms. So um, where are they all headed? Great question tonight. I can hear the pinging of the weather computer, and we'll get to Jennifer in just a minute. These storms, when we talk about linear fashion, look how it bows out right here. I've used this analogy for years. When you have that kind of bow structure, it's like an archer stretching back his bow and shooting an arrow. Well, the arrow will be the winds, the straight line wind possibilities in advance of this line of storms as it moves forward in time. So um, I know we've got an awful lot going on tonight at 630. The Doppler indicated tornado warning here just north of Brainerd, just north of Mille Lacs. That's in place until 645. I want to give us a minute. We can take a break and take a breath. It is a very active weather night here across the north coming down into parts of Stearns and Sherburne County in the next 30 minutes. I'm going to take a quick commercial break. Uh, we'll be back here with more coverage of storms and of course the news of the day on Fox 9 right after this.